Hi, early learners. This week we are learning about the moon, and so I have a fun book to share with you. It's called Balloon on the Moon, and it's written by Dan McCann. And I'll show you the pictures as I read. Here's the picture, see that? Daddy was quick, but not quick enough. A gust of wind caught Will's red balloon and swept it skyward. Daddy jumped for the string, but it was no use. Soon the balloon was off, 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 nothing but a small red dot in the clear blue sky. I'm sorry, Will, said Daddy. It looks like it's off to the moon. Will started to cry, which made Jake, his big brother, very sad. Lying in his bed that night, Jake thought about how much Will loved that balloon. Just before he dozed off, a wild idea came to him. Yes, he decided, that's what he had to do. Accomplishing this most important mission required a trip to the Kennedy Space Center, NASA's launch headquarters. While his moon, while his mom looked at a rocket model, Jake headed to the front counter. One ticket to the moon, please, he said politely. How old are you, asked the woman behind the counter. I am six and three quarters, said Jake proudly. Just a minute, said the woman. She picked up the phone and spoke in a whisper. Moments later, a man in a dark blue suit came out. So, said the man in the dark blue suit, I hear you want to be an astronaut. My brother's balloon flew to the moon, said Jake. I'm going to get it for him. The man in the dark blue suit looked hard at the boy. I won't take up much space, Jake continued. I don't even have to eat. Well, maybe just a snack or two. You've got spunk, said the man. The man replied, I like that. The next mission leaves tomorrow at eight. I'll be there, said Jake. And with a smile, as long as my mom and dad say it's okay. Of course, said the man in the dark blue suit. Welcome aboard, as long as your mom and dad say it's okay. Jake's mom and dad really weren't too thrilled with the idea of their oldest son hurling through space, especially since he was only six and three quarters. But they agreed when they saw how much Will was, was sad without his red balloon and how determined Jake was to help. Jake was back at the Space Center at seven o'clock sharp the next morning. A mob of reporters and photographers were there asking question after question. Are you nervous? Do you like Tang? Shouldn't you be in school? See the, the all the reporters? The time came for Jake to say goodbye to his family. Let's get you suited up, said the man in the dark blue suit. A team of men and women put Jake into a specially fitted space suit. They slid his hands into special gloves and snapped on his helmet. Inside the rocket, a booster seat was waiting. The crew stopped Jake, strapped Jake in tightly. His nervous stomach was doing flips. To make matters worse, he had forgotten to use the bathroom. It was too late now. There's Jake in his space suit. And look, he wears a helmet, just like you wear a helmet when you ride on your bicycle. Let's go get that red balloon, said the commander. And the booster, the booster rockets roared to life. God speed, Jake, said a voice from mission control. On went the countdown. Count with me. Three, two, one. Blast off! Bye-bye, Jake, Will yelled from below. The engines were loud. The ride was bumpy, bumpier than only any roller coaster. How are you doing, Jake? Asked the commander as the sh they shot spaceward. Can't talk, he replied, trying not to toss his cookies. That means his tummy got kind of upset. Jake grabbed his armrest and took a deep breath. Then before he knew it, the bumping stopped. The rocket had arrived in outer space. His cookies intact, Jake unfastened his seatbelt and slipped off his helmet. It began to float, and so did he. Whoa, said Jake quietly. 
I'm flying. That's because there's no gravity in space, so you float around like you're flying. Excitement erupted as he swam to the window. I'm flying, oh yeah, I'm flying, oh yeah. Jake did a, flew a few flips on his way and then stopped to gaze outside. What an amazing view. Is that, he began, that's Mother Earth, said the commander. That's where we live and where the people who love us live. Jake's smile melted away suddenly. He missed his mom and his dad and his brother. He missed his bedroom and his toys. He had to remind himself he was on a mission, a most important one. You must be hungry, said the commander. Jake remembered saying that he wouldn't eat anything, but he was starving. He gobbled up a hot dog, which was pretty cold, and some astronaut ice cream, which wasn't. He washed it all down with a pouch of tang. That's kind of like Kool-Aid. After dinner, Jake drifted into a peaceful sleep. Making history can be tiring, especially when you have to wake up at six o'clock in the morning to do it. By the time Jake woke, the rocket was orbiting the moon. Jake called the commander, it's time. The boy astronaut made his way to the lunar module which, after a quick descent, landed softly on the moon. You are go for moonwalk, said Mission Control. Good luck, Jake. Jake carefully climbed down the ladder and on to the lunar surface. That's the surface of the moon. That's one small step for little man, said Jake, and one giant leap for child kind. Jake looked around. It was so quiet. He squinted his eyes, and there... Tangled among some moon rocks, he saw it. His brother's red balloon. Do you see the red balloon out on the moon? It was along with a collection of wayward kites and some other lost toys. His stomach jumped with excitement. I'm going, to, going in for capture, said Jake. And you can see in the picture, there's other lost toys. They're kind of in gray, so they're kind of hard to see amongst the red balloon. He bounced over the rocks and swiftly snagged Will's balloon. He grabbed a couple of kites as well. Someone on earth is probably missing you. Jake planted an American flag in the soil, wrote a J and a W. What do you think the J and W stands for? For Jake and Will, that's right. For Jake and his little brother, Will, he wrote their initials with one gloved finger. Then he made his way back to the lunar module Mission accomplished. You see, Jake has that red balloon in his hand. The crew let out a great cheer. Hooray for Jake! They shouted, Mission Control, said the commander. We're coming home. Can we swing by the North Pole? asked Jake. Negative, said the commander. There he is, talking to Mission Control. The re-entry into Earth's atmosphere was no picnic. Jake was very hot in his flight suit and his stomach was queasy, but the splashdown went perfect. You see, they go, they splash down, they're gonna land in the water. After the helicopter brought Jake in, the reporters and the photographers were waiting. Did you see any moon people? How does it feel to be the youngest astronaut in history? Did you toss your cookies? Most important, they asked, did you find your brother's balloon? Jake proudly held it up for the crowd to see. See Jake in the helicopter with his red balloon? Jake was happy to have met so many nice people, happy to have flown into orbit, and happy to have walked on the moon. But seeing his brother's face when he brought back his red balloon, that made him happiest of all. Of all. Thank you, Jake, said Will. You're welcome, Will, said Jake. That's what big brothers are for. The end. I hope you enjoyed this book, and I hope you have a great day, and don't forget to go out at night and look at the moon in the sky. Have a great day.